Hello fellow bike people. It's been a long time since I've done one of these project used bike videos. That's partially because bike shop life has been crazy busy and partially because the bike boom has been keeping used bikes in such high demand that supply has been super limited. It seems like all the good bikes have already been snapped up and anybody who already had a half decent bike has kept it and fixed it because it's been near impossible to buy new recently. I finally found a good deal on a bike that has some excitement and personality to it. What we're looking at here is a 2006, give or take, SNM black bike. I made a video a few months back called The Dark Ages of BMX, and I wish I'd had a bike like this when I was filming it. The TLDR version of that video is that 80s bikes were super fun but fragile, 90s bikes were super strong but trash to ride, 2000s bikes were on the right path, and 2010 and newer bikes are near perfection. The 90s were the dark ages of BMX because the bikes were hard to ride and the whole industry nearly tanked during that period. The next generation of bikes starting in the early 2000s can be compared to the renaissance. The industry rebounded and bike companies basically had all the technology figured out, they just needed some fine tuning to reach the modern era. The black bike is a perfect representation of a BMX renaissance build. S&M is a legendary company and owner Chris Moeller has had a massive influence on how BMX has developed as a sport. Now I haven't been able to confirm this, but from my research, it seems like this is one of the first BMX bikes ever with an integrated headset. As far as I can tell, Chris Moeller licensed the design from Colnago, an Italian road bike builder that used custom angle bearings from Campagnolo and this kind of set the standard for BMX bikes to come in the future. These headsets are also called Campy Spec, which is a reference to the original Campagnolo bearings. Another interesting feature is the European style bottom bracket, where the bearing set threads into the frame instead of being press fit into place. These are very rare these days. The geometry on this bike is much better than Dark Ages bikes. The head tube is still a bit too slack and the rear end is a bit too long, but the bottom bracket is in a nice low position and the top tube measures 20.5 inches, which is perfectly reasonable. Now I'm sure what I'm doing with the grinding wheel here looks kinda weird, but let me explain. The last owner of this bike spray painted the wheel really, really badly. It's sloppy, there's runs everywhere, and it's really thick. I'm also out of paint thinner. So realistically, this is the best way I have to get it all off. Doing it with sandpaper would take forever. I do plan to repaint the wheel later, but I'm going to fix them up first. Both wheels in this case are missing a whole bunch of spokes. That's kind of one of the benefits of BMX bikes from this era, as the wheels are usually so strong that missing a few spokes isn't a huge deal but it is pretty bad for the wheels and it looks pretty bad and you get the spoke nipples rattling around so obviously I'm gonna fix those. Other than that it looks like the bike just needs a general service and a chain so you know getting rid of the grime that's built up on it, cleaning it, you know relubricating everything and it'll run good. Having ridden the bike, I was kind of torn about how to build it up. On one hand, the smaller bars and the older, heavier parts limit the bike's performance, but on the other hand, the build is all some of the best parts from the late 2000s and early 2010s, so I'd love to keep it as period correct as possible. Excuse me. 
This bike was originally sold as a frame instead of a complete bike, so I don't really have to worry about finding original parts. It's more an issue of finding parts that are old enough to match the vibe, but new enough to be more user friendly. After some consideration and seeing what parts were available, I realized I could make this pretty good. This is kind of a personal victory here, but it's pretty cool, so hear me out. I used to buy bikes from garage sales and Craigslist as cheap as possible, mash them together, and then buy the few fancy parts I could afford from local bike shops. The builds were all done with the goal of maximum strength because I was paranoid about my cheap bikes falling apart. After a few years at Cyclepath, Dan and I started building bikes that were a lot more user friendly and a bit more modern, but at the same time still had a big emphasis on being budget friendly and easy on the wallet. That meant making a lot of concessions on the bike builds, like instead of using We The People parts, we would use Salt and Salt Plus, because it's the same company, so it's realistically the same quality, but the lower level Salt and Salt Plus parts don't really have the same amount of features, so you're not going to get as much heat treating, or butting in the tubes, or machining on the parts, or whatever the case may be. But still good bikes, just not the fancy brand names. And that meant fancy brand name builds like this S&M were basically unobtainable. Dan showed up with his original Redline 7.1 frame that he recently rebuilt, and it's crazy how much this frame reminds me of that one. They both have thick single wishbones, and they both have the large diameter tubing that's typical for that generation of bikes. We went for a ride and met up with Alex and had a surprise session with him, and this bike runs great now. After all the work and the new parts, I'm only about $300 into this bike. And that's about what a new entry level BMX costs these days, I got my dream build for that same price. I know I've said this before, but it's extra relevant right now in the age of the bike boom and social distancing. Used bikes are the best worst kept secret in the bike industry. Whether you see bikes as a tool, a sport, a social activity, or a lifestyle, used bikes can offer amazing quality for your dollar, and they can sometimes be better than similar price new ones.